Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Most of us, at one time or another, have desperately cheered and exalted over some sort of a team, whether that's a professional team or a high school team or a college team. Could be baseball, football, or even hockey, or maybe even dancing with the stars. But you have had a team that we have at one point probably lost our heads for and with and lost our cool in the midst of the heat of the battle. We think of those teams as our teams. And when we think about our teams, we sort of have this strange relationship with sports that to the most part doesn't make any sense to me at all, that we, we receive some of the glory when the team does well. We will go, wow. Your team's really doing well this year. They've only lost half their games. I can't believe that they've only lost half their games. They're doing really, really well. You must be so proud of them. Maybe this year you'll actually beat Alabama. And I'm like, of course we'll beat Alabama. Alabama's like 14 and 14, because you remember, it's baseball season, and the Razorbacks are number two in the nation, so... It's odd that we receive glory for the success of a team that we absolutely have nothing to do with at all. We can receive the glory for something that we have nothing going on. The best that we can do is maybe watch their game. We get glory from this for nothing that we deserved and nothing that we accomplished and nothing that we added unto the team at all. This undeserved glory that we receive, we then... Return unto the team from which it came, right? We cheer for them. We yell for them. We pay money to go see their games. We buy their gear. We have merchandise. We have hats and T-shirts. And most importantly, foam fingers, which is the high point of all fandom. We can't wait to win. I actually cannot wait for the Arkansas to win the baseball World Series this year so I can rub it into the face of all those teams that think football is actually important. You know who's been really successful, though? It's not any sports team, but the Lord God Almighty, who has been very successful. He's created this beautiful world in which we live. He sustains it. He provides for it in every single way. He sent his son into this world to free us from sin and death and hell. God is certainly our winner. And although the blessings of our gracious creation, we too are winners. And we're allowed to share in that glory. In baptism, we have been glorified in the waters that our Lord God has given unto us to be glorified in. And in those waters, we are made his very own children. And through those waters, we gain the glory of the Lord God on high, on high, for his name is placed upon us. And we share in that glory when we confess our sins, when we receive the absolution of the Lord God Almighty. We share the glory when we read his word, when we remember his love and his deliverance that he has over us. Whenever we partake of the Lord's Supper, we share in the glory of God, which is placed upon us as heirs the kingdom of heaven, this body and blood given for you for the forgiveness of your sins. We had a reading a couple of weeks ago, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, which I can't seem to get out of my head when I'm sitting down and writing. It says that you were a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness and into his wonderful light. I urge you, as I've urged you before, to take time out of your busy day and busy schedules to reflect upon that undeserved glory that God has placed upon you and in your lives. You are a special people, a special creation, a light unto the world. And since God has allowed us to share in this glory, we want to return that glory back. Jesus tells us in the Gospel of John that he is no longer going to be in the world, but that we are in the world, but he is still on our side, that he has not left us alone, he are not orphans, that he has sent us a helper, a parakletos, 
a comforter, a, a counselor, an encourager, exhorter, the very Spirit of God by which we were baptized still lives and in, 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 in resides richly within us. And being assured of this, we're left into the world to do the work of God, to give back to God the glory that is due his name. We do this through all sorts of things, all kinds of good works. We also could use some Jesus foam fingers or maybe a Jesus dashboard attachment to give back the glory unto the Lord. This little guy has a date with a local, uh, a local restaurant that Karen and I have decided that we're going to sneak onto their shelves when they're not looking and we'll see how long he stays there. We give glory unto the Lord God Almighty when we reflect his ways in our life, when we take part of the things that he has given us to do. Having been found in the appearance of man, he humbled himself, even becoming obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Matthew chapter 28, verse 20 tells us the teachings of them to obey everything that I have commanded you, and surely I am with you until the very end of the age. We receive the glory of God when we receive his word and his teaching. We receive the glory of God when we receive the body and blood of Jesus Christ. When we tell others about this, this wonderful news that we have been given, that we are indeed a holy priesthood, a holy nation nation dedicated unto God we receive the glory of God when we serve our neighbors the Bible tells us that Jesus did not come to be served but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many you are that many and we are the people of God of whom the world sees we are a reflection of that glory that he earned and we did not it is our responsibility to be the light of the glory of Jesus in this world. People see how we treat one another, especially those who are closest to us. People notice how we respond when someone has hurt us, when they have abused us, when they have they've acted like the world is going to act. People notice when we respond, how we respond to crises in our lives and, and crises in lives of, of those that are not ours. And all that we do and say, we want to reflect the glory of our Savior, Jesus, who has made us one with him. When we reflect the glory of the Lord, we do that the best, not when we try to reflect perfection, which is impossible and mostly fake. A lot of our brothers and sisters do that. There's, there's innumerable Christians in the world that are faking spirituality. They're faking perfection. And the world sees that too. They see that, that imperfection and they call it hypocritical. And so the church has got a name of being hypocrites. It's well-deserved. It's hard-earned. We don't want to, to try to fake our spirituality or fake this holiness of God. We reflect the glory of God, I think, the best when we reflect the forgiveness joyfully and thankfully when we rejoice and excel in the forgiveness of God that he has given unto us and then without hesitation we pass that forgiveness on to those around us when we leave this world God will glorify us with him forever and we will finally see and fully partake in the glory of the father not as a reward but as a promised inheritance given to the children of God for all believers who who are made one with Christ. Until that day, we pray that God would use us to glorify his name in this world and all that we do in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.